What's up guys, Adam here again, and today I'm gonna to be changing out our standard hole in the ground type fire pit. Now this was really easy to make and also fairly inexpensive, which is probably why I went with it in the first place. But like most fire pits, it smokes like crazy. So people are having to sit on one side of it or having to move around it, depending on which way the wind is blowing, just to avoid that excess smoke. On top of that, we also have an infant. So out of an abundance of caution, we really have had to cut down on having any fires at all. And so many months ago, I started researching and thinking about how I could make or find a more smokeless fire pit. I continued looking and I found these standalone, almost insert looking type smokeless fire pits. And in my opinion, they're a little bit small and they're a little bit pricey, but in the reviews, people were just raving about how well they worked. So I was looking into how they work and thinking to myself, how can I take the technology or the science behind this smokeless fire pit that so many people say works so well and turn it into a larger, more conventional looking fire pit that we like. And so I think that this is gonna turn out pretty well, but we won't find out until we get it done. So let's go ahead and jump right in and see what we come up with. Let's go. Now, one of the most important items that's gonna be needed is a fire ring. And this particular fire ring I got online, and I'll have a link down in the description down below where you can check one out for yourself. But this one came in four pieces, and it gets bolted together using eight bolts, and it goes together very fast. Now, I went with this specific fire ring because it has this flange or this ring that goes all the way around the top of the fire ring. And the reason I did that is because it's going to really simplify this installation. And when I get to that step, I will expound a little bit more on why having this ring at the top is going to really make it a lot easier, why it is so important. So now I've got the old fire pit completely filled in. I've got my stones down nice and level, and now I can start laying the lowest level of the stones that are gonna be stacked around the outside of this fire pit. All right, so I'm gonna take a real quick break from laying this first level of stone. I wanted to show that I'm leaving at least an inch and a half gap or so between the inside of the stones and the firing. I want to be able to have a gap here, or an envelope basically, of cool air, where eventually that cool air is gonna be introduced into where the fire will be, and that is what will make this whole thing smokeless. All right, so you know how I said earlier that I needed to introduce air into that little pocket that I was making in between the stone and the fire ring? Well, now I need to actually remove some of these stones in order to introduce that air. And I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna actually break them in half so that it's gonna allow for air to come in, but also still allow for there to be support for the second row. And I don't have an even number between each of these stones in order to make it completely even for which ones I'm gonna pull out. So I decided to go with every third stone to every fourth stone, to every third stone, and then to then the fourth stone. So now I'll just go ahead and pull those out to go break them up. So the good news is since I have four holes to fill at the bottom of that first row, and I only need to fill them with halves, I only have to break up two of these stones. So less work and more stones left over. Now I've found personally for me that the best way to break these in half is by just using my hand. Now I've been training for many, many years. So if you have not trained, then I would not advise doing this at home. But I found for me personally that this is the quickest and most efficient way to break these in half. So let's go ahead and get ready for this. Now don't worry, if you're not trained in the arts of rock wando like I am, there is another method that's really easy to do that I'm gonna show you now how to do. So the three main things that you're gonna need in order to do this is you're gonna need some safety glasses, you're gonna need a masonry chisel, and a nice size mallet or hammer. 
So what we want to do is we want to take the chisel and we're going to just score this half of the stone using this hammer. What this is going to do is it's going to promote a nice even break when we finally get that chisel going on the other side and it breaks through. So we'll flip it over and now we'll take the chisel and doing the same thing, but we're not going to stop until this rock breaks in half. There you go, right in half the way that you need it to be. All right, so now that those stones are broken in half, I can put one in each one of these gaps as support, but also allowing the air to come through. And then I can continue on with the second layer of stones. So I could have done this step a little bit earlier, but now it's fine as well. Now I need to take a hole saw and I need to cut some holes all along the top part of this fire ring, all the way around it. And just to give an idea on how this is gonna work now, we've got our stones where we broke them in half and have holes in the bottom that's allowing that cooler air in. We've got our cavity or envelope between the stones and the fire ring where that cooler air can set. And as that cooler air sits there, it will be warmed by the fire, which will cause it to rise, and it will enter into the fire through the holes that we are about to cut. This will supply the fire with nice, warm, oxygenated air, which will cause a secondary combustion to help burn off that excess smoke. Now, I talked a little bit earlier about this specific firing and why I went with it. This flange going all the way around, it's covering that cavity where that cooler air is going to be sitting. So... If it was open, instead of having this on top, you'd have to set something on top of it in order to keep that cavity closed to then feed the cooler air in through the holes that we're about to cut. So let's go ahead and cut those holes in. All right, so I have fully upgraded from the safety glasses to the safety goggles because I literally feel like I'm swimming in metal shavings. And I don't know the last time you had a piece of metal in your eye, but I have never had it and I wanna keep it that way. All right guys, so now I've got all of the holes cut. I could be done because the cap is keeping everything like an envelope down below, but just for aesthetics and it's gonna help close it up just that much more, I'm gonna add another row of stones to this. If you would want a bigger stone on the top there, they do make bigger capstones that you can put on there, but I think this looks pretty dang good for using pretty much just stuff that I already had. But now the real question that everybody's wondering is, does it work? And the answer is, yes, it does work. Holy smokes, or I should say holy smokeless. That is amazing. I should have done this a long time ago. That's awesome. All right guys, so I really couldn't be happier with the way that this turned out. It looks great, at least in my opinion. And more importantly, it functions exactly as I was hoping it would. Now, it didn't take away the smoke 100%, but that's gonna be pretty much near impossible anytime there's a fire. So it has cut down the smoke by a huge amount so i would consider that a great success i hope that you found this video to be interesting if you did please let me know by leaving a comment down in the comment section and also giving the video a thumbs up and if you like videos like i did here today then consider hitting that red subscribe button and i look forward to seeing you in the next one